uh, my name is Tinia Alonga. I have my hands in music. Um, I'm a talent manager. I manage Pretty Boy Dio. So the funny thing is, I started off as a blogger. So like before, um, before there was even Culture Custodian, there was a blog called Ego Fix. Um, so I was actually the guy that ran the website. By this time, I was, I was I've been like 17. But we used to support the artists then, like like files. I mean, them files they were like they were like the first wave of internet artists at the time. So you know, I used to do interviews with a lot of those guys. I saw a lot of those guys come up. So I did Ego Fix. After Ego Fix, I interned at Storm Records. I was like a personal assistant to Tola Odunsi. One of his personal assistants, actually. But I was his personal assistant, particularly on promotions. So I used to like make sure like all the artists their social media was popping their reverb nation this is how far away it was twitter had just come out at the time at that time the platform was reverb nation that was what artists used to use um so yeah i did that this storm records then after storm records i went to uni in jan stopped doing music for a while i was just around people then culture custodian started and that was like my entry back um and yeah man after culture custodian moved back to nige started working for budge um no actually i started working for isa um isa employed me to stargaze <laughs> it's a long journey isa employed me to stargaze um when i was at stargaze i became budge's road manager then budge left stargaze and i you sort of left with budget i didn't even leave stargaze dissolved and turned into plug after but then budge signed to a label called hf and i went to budge the label and i was budge's official road manager then i now manage deal <laughs> and that's um, how we found ourselves here so i guess like i've done a lot of things i was a writer but i think through talent i always wanted to end up in talent management I feel like without that experience, without that Stargaze experience, I won't be able to, in general, function at the level at which I'm functioning now. Because be it artist management or, you know, my brand ambassador job or culture custodian, you have to, you have to function at a certain level where it takes experience, it takes plugs. So, I feel like working with Budge and Asa was a very fundamental time. You know, Asa introduced me to that basic um that basic foundation of contacts that i needed to function on my own so be the sort of thing where budge has a new single out like i remember when phantom dropped the single with um run town it's just basically like wrote a list of radio oaps for me gave me a car for the day i was like i didn't know anybody but so just like look you're gonna go to all these radio stations you're gonna call these people and you're going to make sure that they play the song. And you know, it's our book interviews. He would just give me the contacts. He would get to his radio station, make sure Budge gets there on time, call the person. You know, it takes a lot of humility to do that. But like, I knew where I wanted to go. So I didn't mind like being humble at the time and just doing that for a while. And that was what, like, that was what got me in the door. Because when these people see you again and again and again, and it's like, okay, this is clearly Asa's boy. You know, he's with Budge, and they can see that you're doing your own things as well. You know, you have culture custodian going on, so they are even hearing about you from other corners. I started doing like five, seven nights, so like, everything just started like coming together. And at a point, I just realized that okay i've earned these people's trust i've gotten these contacts and i can function on my own the image of isa and working with him are very very that two very opposite things so like before you know i had known isa from young like for a very long time from like secondary school um, in fact he went primary school with my sister i've known him more or less all my life but when i was in jan like and like obo blue you know, you always hear things like, oh, like, Isa is mean, Isa is stuck up, Isa is this, Isa is that, but, like, I never really got that from him. You know, when I got back to Nige, and I 
I hit him up that I'd like to work for him like it was so easy I felt like he made it easy for me because he could tell that I was serious but he made it easy you know he was just like yeah come through it took it took like two days it's how it's kind of gathers like everything is organized he writes every single thing down like everything is is planning is in email like it can be something as simple as um let's do a club appearance for budge next week he'll tell me to send an email like he documents every single thing you know like isa functions like he's like a 40 year old you know it's like he documents everything he keeps accounts of everything he has like lawyers like he's so organized he's so structured i can tell isa yo we need to get this done i know he does he just does this he just pulls out his phone and like he just knows who to call and he knows who to call for everything so when i was working with him a few things stuck out to me is like you need to know everybody like you need to know how things work Gil was going through a bit of a rough time he had just come back from yankee he signed a deal with d tunes at that time d tunes was on fire he had him and sean Tizzo were like on top so deal signing to d tunes was actually meant to be a good thing but Dio signed to D-Tunes towards the end of that label. So I guess like Dio had gone through a rough time. He came into the industry on a rough patch because he entered into a label as he as was closing. So he was looking for another deal. He was basically like trying to reset himself. And I think it was Tito actually. So Tito is his cousin. Tito is my partner in Culture Custodian. Tito is his cousin. And um, Tito told him that, yo that um tia is working with isa but i know that tia would like his own client so i think you should hit tia up so however way that conversation went it happened dio proceeded to holler me after so when dio came to holler me from working with isa i always knew that when it came to like managing an artist he had to enter it very slowly so i told him i was like yo because me i was a fan and i knew that managing deal would be good for me not even for just for him for me as well but i knew i had to be careful about it so i told him i was like look yo um i don't know what your situation is i don't want to manage an independent artist because i don't want to struggle with anybody to be honest so i hear that you're about to sign a new deal i'd like to sit down with your label see where their head is at i just wanted to be sure of the situation i was entering so i know that okay you are a good guy but i have to meet your label so the label he was talking to that time the deal didn't fall through so we stopped like he didn't even come back to me but i heard from tito that the deal didn't go through so i knew why i hadn't heard from him that conversation ended then another deal came this is within the space of like two months he had a song out called your level and the song was moving so i guess a lot of labels were hitting him up so another label hit him this is a label he eventually signed to so when this label hit him he now hollered me back again that yo another label has hit me this one is looking sure blah blah so we go to the guy's house speak with the guy we see that everything is everything i think like three days later he signed the deal then once he signed the deal well like, okay it's official you have a record deal so i'm managing you and I think like by the following week, we shot your level video, we dropped the video, and that's how we just started. So yeah, man, it was like he wasn't even like someone that I knew personally for long, or just like I was a fan of his. And he just came to me and it just worked, man. He got a deal. And we just started pushing, man. I mean, the challenge every artist has is like finances to do stuff so like even like even though in this interview you've been hearing a lot of deals deals these deals are with very very independent companies there's been no so deal has signed under me he has signed two deals right there's none of these companies were existing before him as a matter of fact this company started because of him so he has never signed to a label that that understands or that has been functioning before him so any label he signs that label runs around him he's basically the label um 
so we've never had that higher power that like guides us we've never had um any like older artists that like let you know that will show you the way like some people do some people have like some ogs that back them then of course you have to deal with like the industry politics is like new artist new manager you know in this lab in this industry everything is connection in everything's relationships in the beginning you don't have that many relationships you, you can't access on certain platforms um you know you can't really get played with some certain people because you can't reach them so those were like the challenges that we had initially um Dio and i were the kind of people that even though we are different you know people may say he's alter or whatever but we function mainstream like the way we move the way we think is mainstream the content the actual content may not be mainstream content the sound the way the videos look it may not be the way everyone else is doing but in terms of like you know the big shows that are happening the radio play the relationships with djs the game played in clubs we move like that um so in the beginning it was a bit difficult you know but i guess like with some key relationships we always just managed to find a way you know i remember like when your level we first signed the deal and we dropped your level like deal will tell you the way we push that song like the way we used to pull up in radio stations like the security guards at sound city knew us like we used to go there all the time like we used to time some oaps go there just jam them make sure that that relationship is sorted because that was the first record we were pushing i like tell young managers that look the first thing you have to do they before even thinking about payola before thinking about anything the first thing you have to do is you have to submerge yourself into the industry first you submerge because when you submerge yourself into the industry you find that it's like a part of your life so it's like when it comes to making calls for things it's not a big deal because like you know who to call and you know who to call because you live this life you hang out with these people you go to these events and you go to these things so naturally because you love it now when you submerge yourself in the game and you understand it for what it is you then know how to maneuver it if someone is telling you it takes 10 million to blow an artist take it with a pinch of salt some artists may have blown with 10 million but it's not everybody like everybody's own rise is different so with this payola thing that a lot of people talk about it's like okay yeah i tell a manager you're meant to have plugs you're meant to have relationships there are one or two people that are going to play you for free there will be those people that they want money now with those people that want money if you don't have money to give them find a way to appease them i don't know send out cupcakes send out some shit. that's not payola that's a gift but it's like that's killing two birds with one stone because like he's not trying to remove money out of his pocket to give you but he's going to appreciate you anyway he's going to make you feel like you appreciate it make you feel like you're something so find a way and that's another thing manager should have value always have value i feel like this is one thing i'm going to tell every manager that my my piece of the artist but never depend solely on your artist like as a manager always have your own things going on whether you have a job you have a hustle you have a business you must have something that has absolutely nothing to do with your artist if you want to be a powerful manager let that other thing be within the entertainment industry so you can exchange the value that you have from both things but never ever depend solely on an artist because artists sometimes can be cocky there are sometimes the artist is going to piss you off it's going to make you feel like you're not doing anything because he's upset he's going to say things to you when you are solely dependent on him you start panicking you start messing with you if you don't get shows for months you are starving your artist will be fine there'll be people with money that will call your artist give them bread they'll go out they'll get babes you need to worry about yourself because this artist can blow up 
get a bigger manager there's nothing you can do about it but if you're a manager you're resourceful i don't know maybe you have this podcast here or you do this club night here you have some other things going on and those things now add to your value your clients will even like it that you know it's like this is not my manager that i send around i'm attached to this entity i'm attached to plug like you can't say i'll give an example like budge and toby for instance like Budge is not just going to refer to Toby as, oh, that's that guy that manages him. It's like, Alaji Popping manages me. You feel me? It's like, it's a thing. It's like, okay, I'm tied to an entity on his own. There's mainland block party. There's all these things. Like, Isa will say, or David will say, Isa is my manager. Isa is not just David's manager. He has Shisha Room. He has Plug. He has all these things, you know. I feel like those are the great guys. If you look at the greats, in terms of this manager thing, the great, the Osage is the female. She has her own zone agency. She has a basement gig. If you look at Tola Odunsi, he was running Storm Records, Storm Vision. Tola Odunsi did the first Big Brother Nigeria in this country. A lot of people don't know that. Um, if you just look at the greats, you know, they all they are all entities in the industry. Don't just be like someone's manager. You know, you're only getting ten percent, twenty percent. At 20% at most, unless you're going to be like Ubi Franklin and drop bar for your artist. People skills for sure. Um, organization skills. Then I don't know if this is a skill set or a characteristic, but humility. Um, humility because when your artist is going through things, you always have to be the calm head. So when your artist catches one, when he catches one hit, when he catches one mad song, it doesn't have to be a hit, a song that is moving. A lot of people are going to be telling him things, ah, bro, you're popping, you're this, bro, you should do this, you should do that, you should get a bouncer, you should be moving with 10 people, you should be, they will tell you all sorts of things, they will fuck his head up. If you are the sort of manager that you are not grounded, you two are getting excited, you are going to the bag up because you two are more when it's time for a show ah let me call all my guys let's move you get to the show organizer is telling you they can only give you three passes then you're having a fight at the venue then all the show promoters know that you are a wahala person you are getting excited you are in the club the dj has not played the artist song in the club you haven't gone to the dj booth but you are pouring johnny walker for babes like you have to be humble you have to be grounded like and that's why i feel like this music p has to be your life like when i was working with isa it was like entertainment was his life so isa would walk into a club with jeans and slippers and walk straight to the dj booth do what he needs to get done and go home because to him it's like i'm just here to get something done so like that's the same approach i adopt so it's like if pretty boy has a show today Dio is going to be in bed like right now is a Sunday it's 5 p.m. Dio is going to be in bed resting for his show I'm already at the venue at this time so at shows I go there twice I go there before the before the show starts in the afternoon I go there I make sure that DJ has his music I go there with a flash drive I put the music there because I don't I know that not all DJs have our music put music there i get the passes because i'm not going to get there and he's standing at the gates because i haven't gotten our passes i go there i get the passes i sort out the music i see the way to the backstage so that when he comes the movement is fluid then i go home then i go back to the venue if he's getting there by 10 i get there maybe 9 45 9 30 9 50 a few minutes before him so when he lands he's like okay we are moving straight to the backstage. I know where it is. I know the passes. I already know how many people you can come with. All that shit. When you get to the venue, you go there, you go backstage. You know that next thing to do is look for stage manager. Find out stage times. Find out when he's going on stage. Make sure he doesn't miss his slot. Top three. In no particular order though. I really like um I really like Maven. Maven has been through every era every era from more hits transitioning to maven i mean it's all done jersey 
I like Maven. I like um I like Chocolate City. I mean I have my my one or two misgivings but the thing about chocolate city they've been around for so long and running a label in nigeria is not easy but they've invested and they've been around and they've rebranded and rebranded and rebranded and now that they've joined with warner i'm looking forward to see what they're gonna do i wouldn't really call dmw a label i feel like dmw is a crew i think it's a crew um if i'm correct i feel like they even all like run their projects individually and get like some support from the label um i'll say they're like my favorite crew i don't know if i'll call them a label per se my top managers so i'll say osage osage isa if you're a san frank is bad San Frank is bad. It's bad. Like when it comes to like new gen managers, that's king for sure. Alaji popping. Alaji popping because not just for the management, just for like his business entirely. What he's done with mainland block parties is special. It's fantastic. Yeah, man. Those are my guys. The Alternative Network.